All right, everybody. No Sleeves McGee here for this third episode of Wise Guys Video Diary. It is Friday. It's been a week since my last episode. And I think I want to expand a little bit on uh, while writing uh, the initial phase anyway. So I, I talked about how I just uh, gathered my notes, threw them out onto a Google Doc, and then started to expand. Also, I'm pretty sure I mentioned how at first I wanted like two different campaign frames and three settings within the book, and how I ditched that later. So, I mean, this goes to show that really um, my initial plan, I didn't stick to it that way. But what I try to stick to is, well, one thing I did when I first started writing also is, you know, awesome companies have like mission statements and that type of thing. Well, I wanted to stay focused on what I was going to write, so I gave myself two goals with this book. And I have to say so far, I've stuck with those. Th those have been my, um, you know, my, <laughs> my limits, um, my guides, so to speak. One was, I wanted an um, exciting setting um, for this book. Well, what does exciting means? It can mean different things to different people, right? I mean, I see some settings out there that I'm sure are exciting to some people, but aren't really to me. So, really, the one of the sub <laughs> goal for this one was that I told myself that first and foremost I wanted to write something uh, that I would want to play that's the main thing um, when you write a setting that you want to publish and hopefully you know make a little bit of money with it you want to appeal to as large of an audience as you can seems like the smart thing to do but when you start writing it, it it's not as <laughs> easy or obvious as you might think because um, you can drive yourself crazy asking yourself um, what about this type of gamer would they do it like this you know me mechanics wise and all that uh, would they like that or would they prefer it another way and then you start going like well why not just write both <laughs> and let them choose and I think I think I was a victim of that where there are parts where there's just too much maybe and what I've done over time also was to cut down I think you have to trust the GMs, right, that are going to use this book or or the groups where they're smart enough to know uh, what works for them. Because, I mean, I use settings or uh, rule systems where I'll kind of homebrew the shit out of it because it suits my style better. And... I think we've all come to expect that, that that's part of the deal of reading and running an RPG, right? You just, just make it your own. So, so yeah, uh, exciting setting, but at the same time, um, make it my own. What I mean by that is if, if I can't get excited over what I'm writing, how can I expect others to be? That's 
the main thing. I, I know I'm not going to please everybody. Uh, there are people that aren't into uh, that type of setting. They want to play the, the paladins that will defeat evil, even if they don't really have a good motivation motivation to do so or whatever. I guess I'm just jaded with the whole I'm a hero type of thing. Uh, for this setting, I want something where... Well, let's put it this way. I think we all play these games for different reasons. We all have our reasons. But um, if, you, if you dig really deep, the reason we play this game is be, it, it, it's, it's a fantasy. We want to uh, play characters that are different than us and enact uh, things that there's probably no way we could <clears throat> we could do in real life, right? Unless maybe you're a soldier and you really like your job or whatever. I don't know because I'm I'm not a veteran. I've never been in war. That type of thing, I don't know. But when I watch, um, you know, gangster movies or uh, a movie like Ocean's Eleven, I can't help but think how cool it would be to be able to do something like that, right? Uh, how you outsmart the cops or the feds or even other criminals. And... Yes, you're a bad guy, but, and I'll talk about this later too, uh, there, there's a redeeming quality that I add to this setting. Also, that, that helps uh, make, make, make it more grounded, more appealing to the audience, and what I mean by the audience is the group, because even if you're players or GMs, you're also part of the audience. So that's that's one focus, the exciting setting. The other one was to offer a toolkit for GMs to run their own um, organized crime campaign with it, and and that's that's when it gets difficult because I mean, take a look at the um, the fantasy companion run, right? Uh, it's a very useful resource, but does it contain everything? Are there rules to, you know, build your own uh, stronghold? Uh, everything fantasy related in that? No, I mean, <laughs> it's it's a book, right? It's not it's not a series. It's what a little bit over hundred pages. So they, they had to pick and choose, and, and that's what I have to do right now, is pick and choose. Um, when, when, you, when I started doing that, it was important to me that there was enough basics there that uh, you could use this, of course, for the Mafia, but you could also use it for the Yakuza or a uh, Colombian drug cartel uh, being a smuggler uh, and even breaking bad what these guys do is um, well evade the authorities the law outsmart them and their goal is to make money so I needed setting rules for that one rule, I think, well, a couple of them work together. They work hand in hand. Uh, one of them is the heat uh, setting rule, which basically, and that's not like sunshine heat, it's heat from <laughs> the cops and that kind of stuff. Um, it works basically like a, a condition bar just like wounds or fatigue in Savage Worlds. So you get, uh, and that's one thing I'm not totally decided yet, two or three, but you get two or three levels of heat before you become wanted. 
okay? And this status isn't just for one character, it applies to the whole group. So that's when uh, groups, while well, in playtest so far, groups starts to police themselves. They don't want the heat, uh, they don't want the cops on them, and I mean there's there's, a, there's quite a bit more to it. There's cleaning where you get rid of uh, some of that heat. There's there's several ways to shed that, that heat, and I'm not going to get into that uh, right now anyway. And then um, you got the security levels that work hand in hand with that where, um, and this I took inspiration from Deadlands, the fear levels. So every place you go has different security levels and those become the penalty when you want to commit crimes in these locations. So um, a very poor neighborhood where the cops rarely show up would most likely be level one. And then you go to a major casino or uh, military base um, high level government building this would be a five there's no six it just goes to five uh, that might change too I don't know um, I know in Deadlands you it creates a Deadland um, I don't know if that fits with this setting but uh, so this you can use basically you know across the board and you also have the dirty money <laughs> so you want to make money and this again Deadlands uh, inspiration while well, that came from Richard uh, his idea where he boiled it down to uh, yeah your goal is to make money whatever profession criminal profession you may be it could be a gun runner drug dealer money launderer anything illegal you do that why because you want to make money so I took I uh, took this idea and it works a lot like dealing with the devil in Deadlands where you have to make the best hand possible um, this is still at the early stage right now it hasn't been play tested um, I'm working with the odds but basically, yeah, you make you know, the best hand you get, the more money you're going to make from your investment. And yeah, that can work for uh, illegal gambling too. It works, works great. Um, the uh, yeah, forge, uh, forgery uh, could be um, drug lab, uh, moonshine, <laughs> uh, distillery. Um, still um, anything right smuggling whatever so yeah these can be can be used in any any time a criminal organization or a setting that you want so that's that's the second goal um, something else to um, Looking around at the other modern settings, and I'm uh, in case you're wondering, I'm aware of the other ones that are a bit similar to Wise Guys, but um, not enough to <laughs> really be worried about it. I mean, you've got uh, Tropicana, but that one has a supernatural uh, bend to it, and it's more like Miami Vice and you're really kind of a good good guy <laughs> a little bit um, so yeah it's a bit like that but not really at least I like to, t to think so uh, Streets of Bedlam this one is really um, probably the closest one but it's quite dark right it's it's Sin City uh, neo noir, the gumshoe thing. Um, 
Wise Guys is a lot lighter than that, <laughs> a lot more humor to it, um, doesn't take itself as seriously. I mean, Streets of Bellum is, is awesome, but um, no, Wise Guys different that way. And then you got Wellstone City, that one also really close, and, and it's a really good book, um, around 80 pages, you've got a whole detailed city in there. Um, really good edges, um, that type of thing. But you look at their, well, what we call a beast theory, and in this case, they're not really beasts, but uh, you look at what all of these can offer, and I think I can do better in the, in the sense where you're going to have a lot more stat blocks. Um, Profiles and PCs. I'm not done with uh, with it right now, but uh, looking at looking at it right now, let's let's take a look. Got about there. They are. Got about uh, thirty profiles, and I'm I'm nowhere near done because I want to. I want to add like a little primer for a bunch of different um, organized crime. Right now I've got the Italian Mafia in there. I had a guest writer help me out and then I think uh, I'm going to ask him again. Uh, there's a difference between the Italian American Mafia, La Cosa Nostra, and the Italian ma Mafia. What, what the the Americans called the zips <laughs> uh, crazy guys so the, these guys are different they operate differently so there's a primer on that and then I'm working on about two or three little prof, uh, different profiles for this so I want one on, on the bikers I want one on the Yakuza the triads um, Mexican or Colombian drug cartels I'm not sure um, and Russian Mafia and they can be more in there I'm I might add more I, I'm not sure it will depend on the page count right now um, I'm kinda over already over what I want and I still got probably a good uh, good 50 pages left to write so there's gonna be a lot of stat blocks in there where you can use when I say toolkit you can use that in your modern campaign, even if it it has nothing to do with um, with organized crime. Because even though wise in wise guys you play a criminal, the goal is also f for you to use this in your modern campaign, which could be uh, could be you playing the good guys, right? But you still need um, still need good villains. You still need uh, extras for your setting for the GM to throw at the players so there's gonna be use to that too uh, what else do I got for uh, for the toolbox um, well some of them are like uh, I've got a criminal generator a crime syndicate gen generator a mob tail generator and these at first I try to make them generic but it's really difficult to make something interesting and useful <laughs> when you stay generic it just it just doesn't work or at least I haven't figured out how to do it but think about it I don't, I don't, I don't see how that would work anyway so I got these um, and I got gear so I, I'm not a gun person I don't know the guns but <laughs> we've got artwork for it for a lot of guns so I'm gonna have someone work on these what I mean by that he's gonna identify them um, give them a short description and we're gonna stat those up and each of the guns are going to have their own 
artwork to it, which is pretty cool. So there's that. Um, a couple new vehicles, vehicle modifications, uh, services, different services, contracts on someone, or hiring a lawyer, which you'll most likely need, right? black market a kind of chart where you can uh, let's say the group goes into a um, warehouse or hijacks a, a uh, truck and you want to know what's in it boom little uh, little chart there that can help you with that um, your income uh, that I, I just started play testing so it might be changes to that how it works uh, something else too I talked about the NPCs um, so the NPCs you know how in the book you've got um, you've got the monstrous abilities well for this setting they're not monsters or are they anyway so I call them street abilities so what these do, uh, like an example, um, again, not play tested yet, but um, uh, connected. So that, that, that NPC is protected by organized crime and may call uh, for assistance or retribution. Then you've got charismatic leader means that the extras under that leader uh, react to the leader being attacked as per the f uh, fanatics setting rules and savage rules so the setting rule itself isn't across the board but when it comes to that individual it applies uh, then I got something new and may I'll save that for later but just to touch on uh, a little bit right now contacts um, who you know is really important I think in the life of a criminal so you've got all these contacts that you can have uh, by by per purchasing the edge for it or you can gain them as rewards uh, during an adventure and these contacts what do you do is each of them as a street ability that only applies to you so uh, let's say uh, let's find one here okay, I've got a the Japanese chef might think how oh, can th this guy be useful right I mean sure he'll cook you a nice meal and Maybe it can be useful sometimes to gather information with your streetwise check, right? But when you pick this contact, um, you get a choice between two abilities. You can you can only pick one. So the Japanese chef, one of them is wisdom, and once per session, and in the span of an of a meal. The chef listens to what's on your mind and shares his wisdom with you. His wisdom grants you a special Benny that you can spend as normal or use to swap initiative cards with a hostile. So it's, it's like an edge, right? The benefit of an edge. But first, of course, you need to, and it works like connection, you need to get in touch with that person first. And that's on top of just the regular benefits that this contact can give you. Right? Maybe he knows how to prepare sushi, that very, you know, deadly fish, right? And you invite someone over for, for dinner. That's not part of his special ability, but it's still something that this contact can do. And this is limit of your imagination, right? Uh, the second ability that you can choose is called Swordsmith. So even though he has retired years ago, the chef crafts a beautiful custom katana for you. 
The process takes one week. You gain the benefit of the trademark weapon. And the chef will only do that for you once. Rings a bell. <laughs> Kill Bill. Yeah, that's where I got that from. So, in a sense, two players could have the same contact, like Japanese chef. Um, I don't know, one could be named San, and he grants the wisdom. And another one could be named Joe. Joe the Japanese chef, whatever, and that one's a swordsmith. So yeah, that and that that to me is part of the um well it is part of the setting, definitely, but you can use the idea of the um uh, of the street abilities for any setting. Right. Especially for that Japanese chef, you could use that for if you play in a Yakuza campaign. So I think that I've rambled on enough. I started out with 15 minutes in first episode and now I'm like at 25 minutes. So just want to give a shout out to everybody who's been watching. I just talked to someone earlier this week, John Riggs. Hi John, thanks for your support. Um, really appreciate it uh, maybe that's something I'll talk about soon is motivation how hard it is to work in a vacuum basically writing when you write it, it's really lonely when when you play RPGs it's you get the feedback right away right it's, it's like you get their reaction you interact but writing an RPG is basically by yourself. And until you get feedback, you work in an echo chamber, right? And hard it's hard to get feedback and stay motivated. So maybe that'll be a topic for next time. Um, meantime, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. Um, ask ahead. Because really, I mean hard for me sometimes to know really what people want to hear how much detail sometimes I'll I might not talk about something because I don't think anybody's interested <laughs> in that aspect right and sometimes maybe I just ramble on stuff that people don't want to hear about I don't know um, so yeah that's it it's Friday Nice weekend coming up. I'm going to try to do some more writing. Um, ever since uh, like two weeks now. No, just, yeah, two weeks. I, I finished a manuscript for the quick start for Wise Guys. Um, right now it's in post production. That means Morn is doing the illustrations. Uh, while we received some from an artist, we commissioned some pieces, um, working on some more illustrations. After that, he's got to do the layout, of course. Uh, the manuscript's been sent to an editor who's going to do proofreading, um, editing, give feedback, that type of thing. So I uh, should be getting that in three weeks or less when I get the manuscript back then uh, depending on the kind of feedback I got from the editor uh, I'll, I'll have a better idea of how much work I have to do with that so I, I mean if everything goes well it should definitely be out six weeks I would say depending on yeah never know it's hard to tell I mean we both work full time so we do this in our spare time um, but yeah this is going to be out and it's going to be free PDF it's meant as a promotion, uh, promotional uh, tool and also a playtest document it's going to be around 40 pages maybe a bit more with the artwork in there and depending on the layout it's hard to tell um, I've got uh, one, how many words? 
regions. Let's see. Seventeen thousand one thirty four pages of continuous continuous text. All right, almost eighteen thousand words. So, yeah, around thirty six, thirty six to forty pages. So, yeah, really excited. Um, getting some feedback being able to make it better remember the echo chamber now <laughs> and you know gonna know what what's good what's bad for people so yeah enough enough talking thanks for listening and i'll see you soon <laughs>